I'm going to give you a quick rundown of setting up the DJ Naza assistant software for the DJI F450. Now if you bought the 300 propulsion kit and everything all together as one kit, that's what this basically going to tell you. Here when you first go in for the first time, you want to go ahead and update everything. Do that first right off the bat. And close that. I usually go here through upgrade. Even if it says you have the latest, go ahead and do it once. To get it done with. Then you don't do any more in here until it says that your firmware version is older than the current firmware version. Because it will, even if it is current, it'll keep updating it. Even if it's current. So you may want to check here and stuff and make sure that they are the current version this is your current version this is what the upgrade version is as you can see it's the same uh, your view window here that's just a window to basically give you a overall view of everything first window here in basics your aircraft if you're doing the F450 it's going to be the X rotor configuration and then your mounting as long as you mount this at this one right here which is your number four that's where you would mount your GPS closest on the two screws that go to the number four arm if you mount it there your GPS coordinates will be X will be negative 4 CM and Y 4 CM and Z is negative 9 CM RC depending on the type of controller you're using if you're using a controller that you have to hook up all 8 cables you'll be using a tradition if you're using a Fataba that has the F bus and you're only using one connection, you would hook it up or click the D bus button. The PPM would be like the stock nozzle. And as you can, you can check your controller now here and see if it works. Go ahead and hit the start calibration, and then you want to wiggle your stick all the way around to the farthest point. And then when you're done, stop, let it in center. And hit finish. And these should be all fairly centered. I had one of mine off a little bit, so. And then you can go over here if you have your X1 for your gimbal control. You can go ahead and do a calibration on that. You want to turn the knob to its farthest point, both ways, and then stop in the center. And click finish. And then you have advanced protection mode. You want to use this for, uh, for your fail safe and stuff like that. And then you can also set up in your controller for your GPS and fail safe. You can set all them. This last one here, you can set to manual, altitude mode, or fail safe. I don't recommend anybody set it to manual mode until you've learned to fly a quadcopter. I like to set it at fail safe. And if anything goes wrong, you just hit fail safe and it'll come back to home. This is your gain controls, basic pitch 125, roll 125, altitude 125, same thing with the roll 125, uh, and then your yaw and pitch or yaw and vertical at 100 seem to do pretty good there. 
if your quadcopter is a little heavier or a little lighter they could change you can adjust them slightly but I would start it that out as a base point I have the Bluetooth the BTU and I also have a OSD plus a Fat Shark HD pilot cam uh, a little anti vibration mount that I made for that made out of aluminum uh, an extra battery for the FPV plus an FPV transmitter and antenna on mine for the weight so that settings there seem to work best for me as I said maybe a little different for you and then in the advanced mode usually right in the recommended section seems to work pretty good to keep you at a a nice idle uh, cut off I would keep that as intelligent because if you cut the motors off while you're in the air it will fall to the ground if it's not on intelligent mode that basically means if you pull your throttle stick all the way down and you don't have that on intelligent it just drops from the air like a brick not good uh, this is your fail safe. Unfortunately, DJI does not like to change the height of 20 meters, which in my area, 20 meters is going to slam me into just about every tree. So, unfortunately, be careful with that. Uh, and you can set your enhanced fail safe here. I would set it as go home and landing. So, if you set it as just landing, it'll land right where it's at and not come home. Intelligent course control that could set up on one of these auxiliary switches, as you can see here. Sometimes an intelligent course lock can be a bugger to get locked in uh, as far as just turning it on. Sometimes you have to play around with it, get your settings set up right, and then come back in to get that to lock. It seems that if you don't have your GPS locked, the first time it will not let you lock that in so you gotta go out and make sure you have a GPS lock and then come back in after you have your first GPS lock and then set that up uh, gimbal if you're using a gimbal you can set that stuff up uh, if you turn that on you'll get a warning here about your F2 if you're using it you know or Xcopter or Aquacopter stuff like that what you use them for uh, you can change your output frequency over here. When I had the gimbal on, it seems like 200 seems to work pretty good, but every motor is different for you. Brushless gimbal motor is different, so everyone works a little different on your frequencies. This adjusts your how much it'll pitch up and down and side to side. Turn that off. And then your voltages, you can set them where you want. Uh, 4S, I have mine at, you know, loaded 4.5, and then regular with no load is, you know, 1510. That's your first level protection. That's when your little red light's going to start flashing on the back. And if you let it, I have mine set at 14. That's a little bit low, but I like to have some time between the two to get home when it starts flashing. So. Uh, once it hits the second level of protection, you best be somewhere to land because it's coming down. It'll still come down kind of slow, but it will come down pretty fast. Fast enough that you want to be fairly close to the ground if you're up high. <laughs> you can also change here what battery you're using, you know, 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S, 6S don't think too many people are going to be using 2S with this controller because of the weight but that's basically what that's for I use 4S I use a 4S 5000 and I get about 22 minutes of flight time uh, with the 2S 2600 I get about 10 minutes 2200 I get about 6 minutes uh, I tried 3S's with the 3S uh, 2200 get about four minutes uh, 2200 
times 2, I get about 7 minutes. And if 5,000 3s, I get about 9 minutes. So I stick with the 4s. I seem to get the best out of that with the 5,000. And it's a zippy 5,000 uh, 30c. And I get, uh, like I said, around 22 minutes. I have my controller set with the timer for 20. I figure 20 is my max. I got to be landing at that point. Uh, your limits, that's your max height and your max radius so you can get away from the 2,000 meters. That's you know quite a ways. So that's, that's plenty. If you want to change that, you can. Uh, the max height means once you get to uh, 2,000 meters, it'll kick the fail safe in until it gets back inside of that 2,000 meters. Same with the radius, you get 2,000 meters out from a circle around you, it will automatically kick in the fail safe and come back. As far as the tools, this is where you do your compass calibrations and stuff. I usually do the basic calibration, that seems to do just fine. Uh, first time I recommend to do the the advanced calibration takes 10 to 15 minutes. You want to make sure it's sitting on a very level surface before you do that. Go ahead and get it set up and then any time after that that it, it says you need it, just do the basic calibration seems to be fine. Uh, reset BTU, that's for your Bluetooth if you decide to put Bluetooth in. And the upgrade basically as I said before that's the first thing you want to do is go in and update everything and like I said even though this says latest version 4.0 if you click on that it's going to want to update it even though your firmware is at the 4.2 no 4.02 same thing here info just basically gives you some stuff it doesn't really matter it's a current software version all right that's about it and then you don't have to hit save or anything, does it automatically. And everything will be set up, should be good to go. Thanks for watching.